that thing hiding? So in that stupid bin, there's no drywall knife. Really? And we have packed that stupid drywall knife hundreds of miles. Wow, that's annoying. And kept track of it for three years. Is that gonna prevent you from doing work tonight? I'm gonna go find it. It's gotta really? be in storage. Cause I thought it was in that bin, yeah. Cause the huh. stupid mud things in there, like all the painting and drywall and all that. And yeah, so I guess I'm going on an adventure. Grr, well I'll see you in a bit. Where is that pesky drywall knife? Uh, it's not right there with the shopsmith stuff. It's not in all the concrete trowels. It's not in all the electrical stuff. No way, have we lost that stupid knife? Really? Well, that really sucks. I don't even know if we're gonna make it to the hardware store or not in time. Yes, 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 it's a green light. We have eight minutes. Where is it, where is it? Hurry guys, hurry. What, that's the biggest knife they have? Oh, there they are. Uh, let's see, let's do eight inch, 10 inch, eight inch, 10 inch. Uh, let's do both. And that'll work good. And we better have something smaller. Let's go with a four inch. That'll work. Thank you. Ha! With two minutes to spare. Woohoo! Here's the Plan B chicken. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> Works in a pinch. It does. Toss it on some salad. We're not salad. too proud. It's a little cold because I had to go get a knife. See, the hard part with buying your food in bulk is that. You realize it's dinner time and everything's in the freezer. Dum dum dum. Planning is required. Yeah. Planning not included. I realized on my way home, if you've never been to the hardware store, two minutes before they close, you're not building a house. Agreed. Because we've all done it. That's a very true statement. There's the guy at the gate who's totally like, oh, is yeah. this guy going to come in? He always in? gives you the look. Uh oh, it got unplugged. Oh yeah, we used it for bugaboo food earlier. Bugaboo! There we go. I remember when we bought these lights, guys, about a year ago. We were getting close to the uh, timber frame workshop. We were still sawmilling into the night. And yes, we were still off grid at the time. And having something that could do both corded and cordless was a lifesaver. We were cutting firewood, we were sawmilling and all that by both of these work lights that we have. And here we are, of course, now we're tied into the grid, but they're still super handy. You can collapse this down here, pull that handle up and set that light just about anywhere. And I think on a nine amp hour battery, we're getting somewhere around eight hours of runtime on low, and I think about four hours on high. Winter's coming again, of course, and I knew once we started inside, before we get the electrical done, it's oddly dark. <laughs> Funny, you have all this light, but then you take a room like this and you close it in and now it's dark inside. So I think a lot of you guys out there that do the trades, you're very accustomed to working by work light, even though there's electricity available. I do wanna share one thing really quick. A friend of mine had a little flashlight in his pocket and I thought, gosh, that's genius. Cause you know what, even in the middle of the day, especially on bright sunny days, it seems like you always need just a little extra light. And if you're like me, you might grab your phone and try to stick it in there and kind of see uh, something, maybe your eyes are kind of, you know, dilated or whatever it's called, and you're trying to look in a dark hole on a bright sunny day. I found this little flashlight uh, at a local uh, auto parts store, and I've been keeping it in my pocket. And wouldn't you know it, I pull it out all the time because it's nice to have just a little extra light. And for such a little light, it's got a pretty nice beam. And this one actually has a zoom feature 
so you can narrow the beam if you need to. I'll try to link to this, try to remember to link to this below the video. If you are the kind of person who keeps just a tool or two in your pocket, get one of these or something like this. I don't know why I didn't think of doing that before. So the goal this evening is to get this taped and mudded and ready for texture. We'll probably add a heater in here. It'll probably take at least a day for all the mud to dry out. I did have a conundrum, if you remember at the end of yesterday's video, and that was what the heck to do right here. So I got bullnose. Bullnose makes a lot of sense. It's basically a piece of metal that creates a nice rounded corner here. It's a beautiful detail, makes it look nice and finished. But the problem is we've got these shower surround screws sticking out and look what it's doing to the sheetrock. It's of course not allowing the sheetrock to lay flat. And this one, I did it with the collated screw gun and snapped that piece of sheetrock. Not good, right? So I talked to a friend who does sheetrock and he said, take these screws out and then put your sheetrock on and put the screw back in or use a sheetrock screw and hold it all together. And then hold this uh, sheetrock back about a half an inch and same thing on this side and the bull nose will go on nice on that corner. When I was just at the, the uh, hardware store, I noticed that they're kind of phasing out, might be a good word for it, that all metal bull nose. They've gone to a paper covered bull nose. It makes sense to me because back in the day, I guess, in my mind, you used to try to cover that bull nose with mud or at least texture and then paint it. But this paper bull nose seems like it's gonna be a lot easier to do to, to mud over it. Uh, I guess we'll just work together and find out if it's any better. But basically they're trying to get rid of the all metal, no paper bull nose. Probably the first thing that people noticed with the sheetrock in the bathroom here when we posted it to Instagram was that it was not green. And I have to share, I went looking for green board because if you've been around sheetrock at all in moisture laden areas like kitchens or bathrooms, we all use green board. I think there's a purple board out there too, but what I found is that not all brands use those colorings on their sheetrock. So this stuff, is MR or moisture resistant sheetrock. It's or, or drywall or whatever you wanna call it. Sheetrock, I guess, is a brand. But this is uh, spec for this installation, even though it's white, which anybody who does this stuff for a living or has been around sheetrock is gonna lose it because they're gonna be like, ah, that's not for bathrooms. You can't put that in there. I think it's worth also mentioning one other small detail. The moisture resistant sheetrock, I, ca I can't tell you exactly what makes it green board, not this stuff, but the green board. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but I'll just say this. When you do sheetrock well, you mud and tape all your joints, you do all the corners, you texture everything, and then you paint it. You put latex paint on it. And I think to the lay person, you paint it because it's ugly and you can get paint in colors and colors are pretty, right? But there's actually a function to the paint that is, I think, missed by most people, and that is a moisture barrier. It is not just any paint, it is latex paint. And that's actually a big part of the interior moisture mitigation strategy for houses. That's Painting happens to be a cosmetic thing, but the latex actually creates a continuous moisture barrier which prevents moisture from inside getting into the sheetrock. So painting is designed to protect this from ever getting exposed directly to moisture. And I'm not talking about splashing, I'm talking about that high humidity air that we get in kitchens and bathrooms and laundry rooms. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, just because you put green sheetrock on your walls does not mean you should not paint the wall. Sheetrock is paper, fact. This stuff is food. And I'm not gonna get into a rant about mold. I'm just gonna tell you that the majority of people don't understand mold. But the simple fact is paper and water equals beautiful place for mildew and mold to grow. The best thing to do is to protect that so that it cannot get wet and therefore mold cannot germinate. Pretty simple, and the way we do that is with paint. So green, white, pink, purple, blue, or orange, paint your sheetrock. I know, I know, I know. 
somebody watching this video is gonna lose it because they're like, but your sheetrock upstairs got wet. Your whole house got wet. You are right. Uh, here's the thing, sheetrock can dry out. And in our case, that area up there, A, was extremely hot and dry. So even though it did get wet, it is able to dry out. So just because you see a water stain on sheetrock does not render that sheetrock garbage. Um, the other thing is we did not have windows and doors in the house yet. So there was actually this fantastic circulation, which sucked because it blew a lot of dust in the house. But the good side is it was blowing dry air through the house. And the rule in drying things is if water can get in, water can get out. So with the sheetrock, even though there was moisture, visible moisture present, as the very dry, hot air moves around, it's going to suck all that moisture right back out. So as long as we didn't run and paint it really quick and trap all that moisture inside, we are 110% confident that the sheetrock is just fine because it was mounted, we didn't move it or manipulate it or anything. Had we tried to move it, it probably would have torn because the paper is very weak when it's wet. It's kind of like newspaper. But since it was already attached and secured, it's not a concern. So that sheetrock upstairs, it's just fine. Oh? Oh, who's that? Who's there? Who's that? Have you adopted the house already? Hmm? Have you moved in? You brought all your books in your bed? <laughs> Buggy, but we're gonna get white, okay? sits a lot more flush against the shower there. And so now this sheetrock screw is holding the surround on, but in reality, it's this adhesive that we put on that's doing probably most of the work. So I think I'll take these screws out and that'll help me to install this little piece of sheetrock here. Uh, and then I'm probably gonna trim this piece back about yay, and that'll give me room for that bull nose to make that corner nice and tidy. And then I'm also gonna have to pull that piece off the back and this piece off the side uh, to do the same thing. Remove those screws and then reinsert sheetrock screws there to hold the surround on. So I'm thinking that advice was pretty good because this little strip of sheetrock is nice and square to this face. So this bull nose, which is a paper covered piece of metal, just a piece of sheet metal that's built for outside radiuses on sheetrock, fits nice right there on the corner. And you can see that we're gonna have to mud quite a bit in here to get this radius to look normal. Um, it's certainly a large radius for that small of an area. I think someone on social media said, oh, you're gonna want a lot more wall here. And you're right. Um, I think if we put another five inches of wall here, sure, floating this out would be a lot easier, but then we'd also lose five inches of wall space. So. I don't know, I guess maybe when I get this all done, I will either 100% agree with you that we should have, or I'll say it's acceptable. Either way, we're definitely learning here. So I think I wanna get these attached first, because then when I tape my roof or uh, ceiling to wall, I'll only be taping to the bull nose. And same thing here, what little bit of tape we'll use on that joint will probably just uh, go over the bull nose. I don't think I want to tape and mud all that stuff first. I guess I don't really know. So I'm gonna pick one way and I'm gonna stick with it. I'm 
there supposed to be holes already in this, guys? Usually the other metal already has holes in it. So you don't end up with this kind of puckering that's happening with this metal. Uh, see how that's kind of created a pucker up there? I don't know. <clears throat> I mean, I know the mud's gonna hide all that, but that doesn't look right up there. I think once it's all mudded, you'll, you'll not be able to see that with your eye. I think on this one, I think I wanna kind of stagger the screws I'm not sure if that's going to make a better outcome or not. Maybe kind of put one there and then put one here. Something like that, maybe. Uh, I don't know if it's better or not. <laughs> maybe it's worse, I don't know. You know what I'm doing wrong? I don't think you're supposed to put screws in this. I think you're supposed to nail this on with a dished nail, a, sh a sheetrock nail. But I don't think I have any of those. And I think I see what's going on. I think these screws obviously have a big fat head on them, which is good for the sheetrock paper, but it's too much for the, for the metal. So all I'm doing is puckering that metal. It's not terrible. Is it really worth trying to wait till tomorrow to go get a dozen sheetrock nails let's see if we can put one more in here without doing too much damage i'm also wondering if i'm putting them too close to the nose well that certainly was a lot nicer than this yeah maybe i'm putting them too close to the nose and it's dimpling the nose i don't know definitely not getting the result i'm after It's better but worse. <laughs> a little piece of sheetrock in there is not very strong, that's for sure. That's better. Nice. Oh, that's looking pretty good. Certainly a lot more finished appearance. It's gonna take quite a bit of mud though. That's pretty much just the width of the bull nose. So man oh man, definitely see what you guys mean by giving yourself more room. It is what it is. I'm not gonna take it back out and build this wall. In fact, we got clean outs down there that don't give us much room, but I can see if you're gonna do sheetrock, why you wanna have a little bit of room there for some mud. Well. <laughs> I don't think this pan's gonna work out very good either because it's got a huge bow in it and I don't remember it being that way and I know I have another red pan that is a lot higher quality so this is only gonna work really for cleaning the blade this way but I guess, I guess maybe that'll work out okay. been a long time since I've done sheetrock and in this quantity which isn't very much it's been a really long time so I think I'm gonna start with the easy stuff I'm just gonna start with taping some of the the lower joints that are easy to reach and then I'll kind of work my way into doing the corners since they take a little bit more finesse and then once I kind of get my feel for that I'll start working on the ceiling corners and I think my goal is to get everything taped and then kind of see where I'm at with the dryness of the mud. I don't think I really need to wait to float the joints until the tape is dry, but I know you definitely don't want to put too much pressure on the tape while it's damp because you'll pull the tape and that just makes a really big mess. <laughs>
Guys, don't watch. This is terrible. Anybody who's a sheetrocker for a living, they're, they're like, just, I don't know, they're cringing. But guess what, guys? That's this whole entire house. Alright, I guess I'll try to speed this stuff up and save you from the nails on the chalkboard. Because I totally know. I totally know that's what you guys are thinking. If Alyssa was in here, she'd be like, do you know what you're doing? And I'd be like, no. Well, it's sort of coming back to me a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> um, let's see. I definitely have my work cut out for me over here. Because I only have a four inch knife. And I've got bull nose there. So I think I'm just gonna tape this corner. Well, I think I'm just gonna worry about taping right now. And I'll probably go around and fill all the screw holes, screw heads. Um, get all that done. And I think we'll kind of just see where it's at as far as dry, like I'm probably putting it on a little thick, so it's gonna take probably longer to dry. Probably had to get a heater in here. Uh, so I think I'm just gonna work on taping, doing the screw holes, and then we'll see where we're at. Missed all the fun. Yeah, that looks really good. Do you want to come get white? Not really. Whiter than you already are? I'm pretty white. That's hard to do. <laughs> wow, it looks like a totally different room, doesn't it? Doesn't quite look all blotchy, huh? Oh, that's crazy. What screws? Right? Like riding a bike. Takes a while though. You'll get to be a part of this and the 5,000 screws that we put in the roof. Yeah. Are you excited? I am. Your arm's gonna be so tired. I'm excited. Gonna be a lot of mud on our ceiling, that's for sure. Yeah, Bugga was up there yelling about something. Really? I'm not sure what he's doing. He's not anymore. He's not? Probably, probably done. Oh, uh, yeah, he's been quiet for a couple minutes, but he was up there yelling pretty good for quite a while. Bugaboo, you didn't show them your hiding spot. Bugaboo was sitting on the chair over there. Hey. Carpet time? Carpet time? Oh, no. Who likes the house? Meow. Yeah.
Well guys, that's not a bad evening. Everything's all mudded and taped. You guys probably already figured out this is yet one more thing that I am not very good at. But I think like everything else, if I just keep trying and keep learning, kind of the master of the tools, you know, maybe by the time we get to the living area, it won't be so terrible. <laughs> I think sheetrock is one of those things that's like really simple, but it takes a talent. And I think it's, it's kind of like tennis. You guys ever watch tennis and it looks like they're just hitting the ball, but then you go to the tennis court and you try to hit the ball like really hard and you hit it to like the next county? That, that's sheetrock. Guys who are good at this stuff, they just knock it out and they just know how to move. They're very efficient. They don't waste any effort. <laughs> I'm not that guy. But it is starting to look like a room. That is so exciting. So I think what we're gonna do is wrap it up for tonight. Pretty tired, it's been a long day. We've had other appointments all day long. And then let all this mud dry. You can see right here, this mud right there is still wet. Kind of right in the middle where it's nice and thick. And that's not even really thick. I got a heater in here running, so we'll leave that in here overnight. It's like 60 something in the house, 62-ish, which isn't too bad. And then tomorrow, we'll have to kind of break out all the sanding materials and knock all this stuff down a little bit. Just go through it once, probably with a sanding screen, I think. I think that's what we use as a screen on a kind of a spongy backer. and try to go through and just knock down everything. And then we have the chore of trying to float all this stuff and make all this stuff look good. And of course, then we've got to sand it one more time. Then if that all goes well, assuming we survive all that fun stuff, then it's time for uh, texture. And no, I'm not proud of those cans of texture. We don't have a hopper. I don't know of anybody with a hopper. Um, we could probably rent one, but it's such a small room that I, and I am, if I'm not good at this, I am really bad at texturing. So I think we're just gonna stick with the cans. It's a small room. We don't have to worry about getting different tools or new tools. Anyway, once it's textured, then we're ready for paint. But here's the thing, like I realized today, I was kind of sitting here thinking in my head about all the steps, like I'm just pounding myself to try to get this room done so that we finally have a bathroom. But here's the thing, like we still need to put the shower door in. That's not a small project because it's a fairly complicated door. We've got to put the flooring in. We actually picked up some vinyl plank, some stuff that I've used in the past and I really, really liked. It's a very thick, uh, very durable, waterproof vinyl product, but it's not a sheet good, it's actually a plank. And that way if you do have an issue with a piece, you can replace it without having to do a patch. We've still got to do all the electrical, finish all that stuff. So we've got all the wires pulled, but we don't have the breakers landed at the panel. And we obviously don't have all the switches and outlets and everything in. So I think what I'm realizing is I have a long way to go. I really hope to have this done by the end of the month, but my trip to see my family kind of delayed it quite a bit. Anyway. Here we are. Makes me really happy to see Alyssa and Bugaboo enjoying the house. It's warm in here. It's nasty outside. That's progress. We're gonna be in here soon, guys. Alyssa sounds like she made some headway on kind of planning for the kitchenette, for the bedroom, the bed. And yes, all that stuff is not done. It's just, we're, we're getting in here. We're moving in so we can get out of the RV. And then I need to go back outside and focus on exterior projects before the ground freezes. That's kind of how it's all gonna work.